So, you have searched for hair cards, but you're not finding what you're looking for. You want to make it yourself, but the process takes too long and it's confusing as hell. That is exactly why I made this tool. This tool turns Blender into a hair card factory. You have every settings to make your desired hair cards in a matter of seconds. From thickness of each hair strand to the length, messiness, curl, and even hair color, all within a simple menu that can be accessed with only a few clicks. This way you don't need to look for any other hair card pack since you can match your hair card with the style of your character as easy as it gets. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how the tool actually works and what can it do. Now let's make some hair cards. First, go ahead and get the add-on from the link in the description. But obviously, if you're not interested and you want to make your own, I have a tutorial for that too. I put it on the top right corner. Make sure you check that one out. First, make sure you're on at least Blender 4 or anything above this version. It does work on Blender 3.6, but you might run into some bugs and crashes. That's why I don't recommend it. First, go to edit, preference, add-on, click on this icon and install from this. Find the add-on and install it. Make sure that it's turned on. And make Maybe even turn it on or off because sometimes Blender bugs out and doesn't show the add-on. Press N in the viewport to bring out the right menu. Then select the hair card studio from the tabs. Let's make it bigger. First thing you see will be a big red sign on the top. Obviously, in order to use the add-on, we need the hair card scene. Click on open hair cards.blend and you'll be there in seconds. And the warning will be gone. First we got these two buttons. I put these here so you have the option to change all of the hair cards at once or switch to individual modification and change only the hair card you want. All of these options depends on these two buttons. Next we got hair amount. If you drag it to the right, whatever the hair count on the hair card is, it will increase the amount of hair strands. But when you drag it to the left, it will decrease the amount. Strands points is obvious. It's literally the same as what we had back in particle system. When you have hair strands, it is always made out of few points. The more points it has, the more flexible it will be. Meaning if you increase the points, you'll have more freedom shaping it later. In the hair color, we can customize the color of the hair cards. If we switch back to multiple modification, we can change the color of all the hair cards at once to any color we want with this color picker. But if you want variable hair color that changes through the length of the hair, enable gradient color from here. Now you have a fully functional color ramp and you can change the color of the gradient to any color you want. And obviously by switching to individual modification, you can edit the color of each hair card separately or even add more colors to the hair by clicking on this plus icon. Glossiness basically is the amount of metallic we have in the material. Some type of hair colors usually shine more like blonde hair. So it's good to have this option. Beside it, we got sheen, which is the same as roughness. You just have to change it until it gets to your desired results. For the hair strand thickness, we got two values, which is root and tip. Root only increase or decrease the thickness of the beginning of the hair strand, and the tip only affects the tip of the strand. Pretty simple. Hair length is obvious. It just decreases the height of these hair cards. It's really important because you have to decide how long your character hair is gonna be and increase or decrease the hair based on that. But we also have a fixed button, which is enabled right now. If we disable it, we get minimum and maximum, meaning the hair strands would have different heights, randomly from minimum height to maximum height. This is good for when your character doesn't have a clean hairstyle. Hair spread is for when you want to add some distance between each hair strand. This will play a really important Roll in the next hair effects we add, so make sure you at least add some distance between each hair strands. After that, we got hair clumping, which does a similar thing as what we had in the particle system. Roots value get the strands around the root closer or farther from each other. For example, if you put zero, the strands get stitched together, and if you increase it, they will get away from each other. Same goes for the tip value, but this time only the areas closer to the tip of the hair gets affected by this value. Hairline shape is pretty cool. You see, some people have a really dense hair with sharp hairline, and some other unlucky people have a really bad hair line that's faded to the back. This is basically a value slider for that. Zero would be a light faded hairline and one would be absolute sharp hairline which basically no one has. So I recommend for more realism choose something in between. Now we have reached the hair effects that are optional but really fun. You can turn them on or off if you want. Hair freeze is also for the people who doesn't have a straight clean hair. The more you increase the value, the hair will be more messy. Also, if you click on freeze curve, you'll have access to a curve where you can determine where this messiness starts to happen. But as you can see, this feature only works individually. And I couldn't get it to work on all hair cards at once. So you need to select the hair first. Reduce hair is similar to hair amount. 
out, but it only removes the hair. So if you applied all those effects to the hair, but thought the hair had too much density, you can increase this option just to lower down the density. After that, we got the coolest one yet, which is the hair curl. When you enable it, you see we got few curls in the hair. If you increase the count and amount, you see we get more and more curls appearing on the hair. And a scale is obviously the scale of these curls. It's really useful for the outer layers of the hair, where the hair is more messy and falling out of the hairstyle, especially for some of the hair that is usually dangling from the hair. I love the next feature, which is messiness. If you look at some of the hairstyles, you see there are usually some hair strands sticking out of the hair. It's basically that. You determine how much hair you want sticking out from this value, and you can customize the strength from here. Also, you can determine from which point these hair strands should stick out. Lighting option is really simple. If you want to get that nice highlight on the hair, like the more stylized art styles, decrease the light source size and the highlight on the hair will be sharper and you can even move the highlight from top to bottom and place it anywhere you want. But if you want a flatter lighting all across the hair, you can increase it. If you're going for more realistic hair, I recommend something more flat. And the intensity is how bright you want the hair cards to be. We finally made it to render options. Here you can determine you want EV or cycles for viewport and the final render. Or even if you want a dark background or fully transparent, you can change it using this option right here. Then at the end, we got four resolution options. If you don't want to make your project really heavy, you can click on low or mid res button. If you don't care about the size and just want the max details, high and ultra high res is the best. But I have to mention, if you don't like the aspect ratio of the scene, you can obviously switch to other tabs like modeling and from output properties, change the resolution manually to any resolution you want. Maybe even delete unwanted hair cards. Then those buttons will also work with your custom resolution. Now, if you want to have a transparent background, save it as a PNG image. Then it will be ready to be used anywhere you want. In Blender, you just have to connect it to the base color and connect the alpha to alpha and it will be ready. But there's a problem. It's too flat. To make the hair pop out a bit, we can generate a normal map for it. First search up normal map generator GitHub and open up the GitHub page. From the releases on the right, click on normal map generator and download the 64-bit version. I swear it's not a virus. Open it and click on load. Import the rendered hair card. Click on normal map and change the height if you think it's too much. Then click on save maps. Change it to non-color. You see it looks pretty nice. And that is it. You can now go ahead and make some amazing game ready hair. Matter of fact, I have two more tutorials about that, which I link on the top right corner. Also, I have a lot of process videos, tutorials, add-ons on my Patreon and Gumroad page. Make sure to check them out. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.